So today I'm going to be walking through a week of group programming for uh, the affiliate which I co-own, Lumber Capital Athletics. And it's going to be a little bit different because often we do individual design. I do individual design uh, on programming TV. So this is going to be an opportunity to look at what affiliate programming can look like and what it looks like for me at my affiliate and the current cycle that we're going through. So I'll give a little bit of context. It is the, the actually the week that I'm programming for is the start of July here, which is we're about six weeks into not about or six weeks into a cycle, which is like, yeah, our, our summer cycle for 2023. Um, currently, these are running eight weeks. So we're most of the way through this one. Uh, the template for this, right? First of all, on Monday, we're going to have clean jerk strength work. And then following that, we're going to have some sort of a longer conditioning based piece that is uh, geared towards running and something else, right? So a couple of featuring running. And the one thing that I'm trying to avoid on Monday is giving people too much uh, additional hinging work. So a lift that is not hinging based uh, because on Tuesday, um, they're going to get more hinging and pulling strength work. So hinging, pulling off the floor, pulling strength, thinking about upper body pulling. So things like pull-ups or rope climbs or, you know, bent rows, anything like that would, would count. And then uh, we're going to involve skill work at some point into this week. Often that'll be on Tuesday, Tuesdays, but that's actually been varying quite a bit. And then high power intervals as well on that day two. Wednesday, day three, pressing. This is both bench press and strict press. These are sort of... It's an A linear progression that we're kind of running where it's that's a fancy way of saying like it's going to vary a lot over time and it's not a linear progression where it's like a little bit different uh, week one versus week two, like one extra set uh, or, you know, a little bit of extra rest or just push the intensity a little bit more. It's a little bit more varied than that. And then we have an MGW uh, Metcon featuring either inversion or pressing work. So MGW, monostructural, gymnastics, weightlifting, three different components. So think like body weight, think manipulating external load, and then think about being on a machine or moving your own body weight in something that is, again, uh, cyclical-based or erg-based. Um, and then, again, that's hopefully going to uh, feature something that is either getting someone upside down or doing a burpee that's involving some additional pressing. So that's sort of the idea is there is that there's some additional pressing work. Thursday is a little bit of a lower day for the gym. Uh, it's often for people who are doing the entire week, more of a down day, but it's still a program day where we're actually putting some, some good quality work uh, in for people who aren't, you know, showing up every day of the week. If you're getting here two or three times a week and Thursday is one of those days, it's still a day where you can push the intensity a little bit and the programming allows for that uh, to happen. So uh, on this day, it's tempo squats. So we're doing uh, a bit of variance uh, in in that format. So it'll be something like we've done dumbbell squats, we've done goblet squats, we've done front squats and back squats, each of those twice now as we move through this. And then uh, ideally... After that second part, it's like multiple AMRAPs, so basically like sets of an AMRAP featuring a box, right? Uh, so oftentimes that will be like step-ups, uh, box step-overs. It could even be um, things that are lunging-based or like carries, things that are a little bit more um, isometric in nature where the person is not getting a, a ton of eccentric loading where they're going to be super sore or beat up. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the squats at the beginning are tempo as well. So basically overall, it's just like a day that's lower joint stress and allows the person to leave with that, like feeling like they still got to work out in, um, but then not feeling destroyed from that. Friday, day five, snatches, and then uh, in the conditioning portion, uh, intervals featuring a dumbbell. And then Saturday is sort of like an open day where I can have a uh, free reign of what I uh, can want to program and having already the rest of the week written out where I can make sure that it's not super interfering or unnecessarily redundant in what we're doing from previous days of the week. And it's often almost always either team or partner based um, there. And then um, you'll see that oftentimes there is a strength in like a conditioning type format where it's like a, a strength is usually first and then conditioning or intervals or you know, that sort of thing a second. That's not always the case, but that is often the case. So let's jump into it. So currently the week of June 26th is up here. So we're going to pull this down and uh, build out a new week. Starting off Monday, again, we have clean jerk strength. And one of the things that we actually did the other week in the protocol, which I've uh, really enjoyed was 
um, some like battery work that didn't have a ton of fatigue. So it was what we did in the protocol was actually very similar. This was every three minutes, I think for seven sets of one minute working window where athletes have one minute to get uh, 12 for males, 10 for females calories on the rower, and then one clean and jerk in the lift have to be finished by the one minute mark. Um, knowing our, our population here, I wanted something where hopefully this was like at or under 30 seconds of work, which 12 and 10 on the rower might be a little bit aggressive. I also want to save the rower for a different week. So this kind of served as actually the run portion of day. So oftentimes looking at a, a longer AMRAP again for this por portion, but I don't always hold myself uh, really stringently to the, the template. Uh, just because I want to include a little bit of variety. And if people are showing up on a particular day of the week, like, hey, coach, I can only ever show up on Monday and Thursday. And that's like, you're only ever getting this one narrow focus. So allowing myself to be a little bit creative, but not stray too far from the template where it's just like a pain to try to manage all and balance all the different things. Like the reason why the template's there to start to, yeah, get an idea of where I can go with stuff. So I actually ended up putting the show run there. Assuming that that's going to be, you know, three to four seconds of length for the average member. You're looking, you know, around 30 seconds to get done with that. Some people will be significantly quicker than that. Um, and other people might take a little over 30 seconds to get through, but they'll have plenty of time either way to get that one clean and jerk in. And that way it's not such like a, a load of aerobic stress or metabolic fatigue that they're like really not able to clean and jerk well. And that allows it to still be strength work, right? And uh, bringing that down to every two minutes, because again, these people aren't lifting crazy heavy in a class environment you know, relative to like some of my higher level competitors. So um, understanding that this is not going to be quite as taxing from a nervous system perspective, like they're going to feel like they can lift again relatively quickly. And that allows uh, them to kind of keep moving. Um, one of the things you'll see on day two over here is that there's skill work and knowing what Tuesday is going to be and what it actually ended up being, I ended up putting the, the skill work uh, onto this Monday because the AMRAP after it, uh, the skill work is actually going to be a little bit shorter. Again, normally it's longer because I made it a little bit shorter because it's only a couple. It's only two movements. So I typically like to keep those a little bit on the shorter end and also allows volume not to get out of control. That That's what sort of allows you. Um, that's why I, I ended up putting the skill work in there. So this is the, the uh, workout that I came up with for the second part. Uh, the lifting portion was a, a hang to overhead. And then I wanted something that like got a little bit more uh, – bounding volume just to increase that a little bit because even four times eight for you know 32 shuttle runs it's not a lot of work um relative to like oftentimes we've been running a mile plus in a class format on mondays before this so getting a little bit additional bounding or jumping in probably makes sense so i did a burpee box jump over and a hang to overhead because that's just limiting the amount of hinging that they're getting and, and most people in a class environment frankly have a, a stronger hang clean than they do shoulder to overhead be just because the shoulder mobility especially for a lot of the guys is not what it could be so or that's just sort of like the reality of what they're dealing with yeah, 15 minute clock is just an opportunity for an athlete to go through and pick out a skill. We have a spreadsheet that we link to and have them be able to basically have a, a tailored progression to the, the type of thing that they're working on, whether it's hanging gymnastics, inverting gymnastics, rope skills, um, you know, weightlifting work with like Oli technique, things like that. It allows them to move through progression at their own pace. And again, that 11 minute AMRAP, uh, two burger box jump over, one hanged over overhead 115 85 uh, and then two burpee box jump over again two hanged overhead two burpee box jump over three hanged overhead two four two five so the hanged overhead will continue to, to build as the burpee box jump over remains the same um, and that way it's, it's sort of like a heart rate spike each time that's coming around and it makes that moving that barbell uh, a little bit more challenging so that would be monday Next Tuesday, uh, we're having, again, since I already did the skill work there, and that's sort of a free floater in the week, it allows me to play with how we're going to do these hinging and pulling intervals or hinging and pulling strength and these high, high power intervals a little bit more. So we're going to start off. There's been a number of different formats that we've done, but basically up to this point, we really haven't touched anything, even like a, a heavy triple on deadlift yet. It's been quite a bit of volume and just getting people like either the tempo is really aggressive. There's a, num a lot of sets where people can't go crazy on it or, you know, they're doing like descending sets where they might get to two by the end, but they started at like 10 and they wanted to be all to be working sets. So they have quite about a bit of fatigue by the time they get there. So this will allow people to get to a higher 
absolute loading than previous weeks, which is the goal because eventually we're probably going to retest like a, maybe not a one RM, but certainly a heavy deadlift uh, by the time we get to the week of July 17th at the end of the cycle. So that's kind of why I put that in there. And then I've been kind of really wanting to do this. I know this sort of is again, straying from the template a little bit, but I really wanted to, I, I was kind of envisioning a workout where people are running around the building, which is like 150 meters for us is a lap around the bid, building. And then doing a, a rope climb, but doing it in a way that is more like sprint focused. So if you, if we look to like previous weeks, uh, this is probably like a really good example of what we were doing before. Every four minutes for four sets, 10 dumbbell snatches, 70, 50, and then max calorie air bike until the one minute mark. So one minute on three minutes off, uh, for four sets. So it's obviously a very hard high for pace. I wanted to mimic that a little bit where someone's almost doing like a, a sprint type effort running and then doing again, like this rope climb work here, which again, for the majority of our members will probably, uh, be just like a regular rope climb or potentially like a rope pull to stand type variation. But the goal is to run really hard before you get there. So there's going to be some people who just can't do that and that's okay. However, um, like they just don't have the top end gears for other people who are able to like they, the regulars rope climb or rope climb proficiency is there where they can uh, very easily do a rep of that. Even when they're fatigued, it then becomes like sprint as fast as you can immediately into a, a rope climb that when you're a little bit fatigued and being the number of sets that there are, it's going to allow the challenge to be repeating that high effort uh, across multiple bouts of work. So I know that that was kind of, kind of like bounding running back to back on two days, but neither day is going to be like out of control volume wise. Like this is less than a mile on uh, the, uh, this Tuesday and it's going to be certainly less than a, you know, probably well under a hundred contractions for, um, you know, the day one. So I think it's fine to, again, to deviate from it a little bit provided that you're, you're smart about it. And I hope I am. Wednesday. So this is our pressing work. The previous week we did strict presses and ring rows. Again, ring rows just being additional like shoulder health and horizontal pulling because uh, you don't get that ton in a class environment. Uh, and then the previous week was bench press, but it was also sort of like in our interval style format. So I want it to be just regular old bench press sets. We did a similar format to this, I believe three or four weeks ago at this point, but it was five bench presses and it was again, all kind of moderate uh, uh, effort. So like RPE seven. So, um, keeping the language of that, maybe more like moderately tough here since it's only triples, but then yeah, having uh, triples again. So intensifying both these, like, again, I don't really want to call them progressions, but that's basically what it is on days uh, two and day three with the deadlift and bench press here. And then thinking about this, I, I know that we're probably going to use the air bike on Thursday's, uh, workout. So, I don't want people doing more running or anything like that. So we're going to get them onto the rowers on this workout. And I also want it to be something that was inversion based because we haven't done uh, much of that. I think, yeah, this one was, again, actually was a bench press in the, the workout and the previous week was uh, shouldered overheads. So again, I want people to make sure that they're actually getting some, some gymnastics work in. So rather than just going straight, uh, strict handstand push up, I figured, figured we would go wall facing this time and make the, the row for meters just because that way, if we go for a, a longer time domain, it doesn't get out of hand for a big discrepancy between the best and the worst. Uh, so and this is kind of what I came up with for this was four rounds for time with a 17 minute cap, just putting the cap on there. So people don't, you know, really, allow it to bleed out too much, right? They keep the work rate a little bit higher. 500 meter row, 50 goblet lunge, 70 for males, 53 for females, and five wall facing handstand pushups. Now I recognize anytime we do something like a wall facing handstand pushup or just handstand pushups as a whole, um, even wall walks, right? There's going to be some people who like that is super easy and they move through it quickly and doesn't really slow them down much. And frankly, we give them a lot more challenge. And there's other people who have no ability to be able to do that. And oftentimes it is like a, you know, seated strict press or a variation like that for something that's like a strict handstand pushup to try to build that capacity rather than going to a kipping variation. So in this case, I wanted to scale it a little bit differently. So we're scaling to a dumbbell overhead carry. This was actually something that they did at for the, the masters athletes at the games the other year for, I believe the 65 plus they didn't handstand walk. Instead, they did a dumbbell overhead carry. And while it's definitely not the same as a handstand pushup, um, it allows people to get some overhead work in. So 
that was the scale. The, the RX Plus is actually going to be putting bumpers up against a wall and then putting like your finger over the lip of them and uh, using that as your deficit. So again, for the, the, especially like, frankly, it's like a lot of the males in class who can strict press well above their body weight. And, um, you know, they're just like strong guys. And that's something where like five wall facing his hand pushups is just not challenging. So giving them to a deficit, it allows them even in a format like this, probably not going to slow them down a whole lot, but it provides enough challenge where it feels like they're, they're being, yeah, having adequate, you know, challenge in the week. Yeah. So that is Wednesday, Thursday. Again, as I mentioned, this is a little bit of a lower day. Um, the, the tempo squatting we went in previous weeks, it was dumbbell squats, then front squats, then back squats, then goblet squats, and then front squats again. So we're going to go back to back squats. So every two minutes times eight sets. Again, we're previously it was a little bit more rest and a little bit higher rep range. So increasing the number of sets, but bringing the reps down a bit and keeping the tempo kind of moderate is going to allow people to increase weight a little bit, but still not get out of hand because it is supposed to be a little bit of a lower day. And then I'm going to actually bring back the format uh, that I'd use from like, I believe again, like three or four weeks ago, which is something that I do quite a bit in this. For example, if we go to day five, June 30th was a workout that had devil's presses and, and lunges in it. And I believe on June 2nd, there it is. Uh, it was single arm devil's press and a single dumbbell lunge. And so the formatting was a little bit different. Rescue was a little bit different, but it was very similar type idea, similar uh, patterns and similar time domain. Um, so that, that kind of thing happens also like June 23rd, I had one that was speed hobbles, which was sort of a play off, uh, two weeks or the week before that, which was speed wobbles, right? Which was overhead squats and uh, double unders and then dumbbell overhead squats and speed steps. So ways to vary a look of what athletes are getting and not having it be necessarily even back to back weeks, but making sure that you're staying narrow enough in the silo of what you're trying to do to make sure the person's actually getting the stimulus that you want, but providing enough variation that they enjoy themselves and, uh, you know, are not bored with what you're actually doing. Um, which is a little bit different than if I was, this, this was like a competitor's program or not. I don't care as much if you're enjoying it, if you're improving, which, um, obviously is still important in the class setting, but we have to balance it a little bit differently. So, um, this is what I came up with 0.6 mile air bike, 16 box step ups, 60 single unders, 16 down dog to an alternating toe touch. And then, so it's eight minutes of that. First set is at 60% effort. Sec second set is at 80% effort, resting four minutes between. And uh, during each of those sets, or sorry, during the rest of each of those sets, you'll be walking uh, once around the building for us. So again, allowing for quite a bit of breathing, the heart rate to get up, uh, to get you know some, some sweaty work in, but also not like super draining. Friday, July 7th. So... The snatch work has been pretty similar in the fact that the intervals have been pretty short. The, the reps have been pretty low, um, just kind of like form focused, uh, complex work for a, a lot of it, um, or stuff that is relatively simple and building because again, frankly, a lot of our members aren't lifting high enough absolute loads relative to like something that, for example, like they could deadlift, you know, I'm thinking of, uh, athletes who can, you know, snatch 95 pounds, but they can deadlift 315. It's like, well, uh, clearly you're not limited by your, your strength in a setting like that. So continuing to allow them to get a lot of like uh, basically a bunch of sets of quality focused work in, uh, is are good opportunities for them to continue to improve technique without having a crazy frequency for us, like snatching like three times a week. Like we're just never going to do that in class. So it allows them to get a little bit of exposure to that. This week we're going every 90 seconds for 10 sets, one snatch plus two overhead squats. And you'll notice I put a lot of the strength work onto a clock just because it allows, um, it allows the, the class like lesson plan to be really more, more detailed and more accurate, frankly, versus just like letting people do it on their own. And some people get done with their 10 sets and 
10 minutes and someone else is going for 30 minutes. Like that's, that could very easily happen. So it's just an easy way to do it, to put it on a clock for everything and kind of control the work rest ac across the board. And then I wanted some, again, these intervals are something that obviously you could vary the format of an interval. Um, but I wanted to be a dumbbell and, uh, I also wanted a little bit more hanging gymnastics since we have only had the legless rope climbs that I believe this week so far. So, um, giving them some toes to bar. And then, uh, also I know we had a box yesterday, but it was step ups, very different than a box jump. So even as you know, preferred scale is going to be a, a box jump, even if it's to a low box on that day. So wanted to, again, a, a similar type feel yet different from like day two where it was that, uh, run into the legless road climb where it was like sprint, rest, sprint, rest. This is going to be more conditioning based, but it'll still be like higher output work, rest, higher output work again for a, a fixed period of time. So 20 minutes of work and rep 20 minutes, eight box jump, eight toes to bar, eight dumbbell snatch. Again, for a lot of people, that's going to be plenty challenging where that rest time is going to go really fast for them. And then for higher level people in class, it's going to be sprinting each of those movements every single time that that comes up, right? And they're basically getting more rest than they are work. And that's totally fine. And that's, it's just going to be a different stimulus, right? They're going to be working on cycle rate instead of as much conditioning base. And that's totally, totally okay. If we go over here, um, one thing that I'll skip to this now is that, uh, we've been incorporating since that we've opened actually, uh, veggies, vegetables. Um, and they're just kind of free floating on a, the tab on the website. And I have these built out ahead of time. So I'll just put, put them right there. But, uh, it's basically just an opportunity for joint health and some additional work that is going to be productive and they can add that volume in and it's only going to be, be helpful. So in, in this case, it's 50 band pool parts. You can always accumulate this work as, as you see fit. It's never um, saying you have to go through an order. So 50 band pull parts, 50 supinated scap pull-ups, 50 hip extensions on the GHD, 50 hollow rocks and 50 ring rows, all stuff that if you did a bunch of that, you're probably only going to feel uh, better generally speaking um, than than if you didn't do that. As I said, Saturday is often uh, partner based and that's no exception for this Saturday. Uh, we have a partner wad, um, but I, I did want a little bit of a additional and it, it sometimes it's based on like the length of the wad or other times it's just like kind of what practically fits into the week. And if I feel like I wanted something else, I almost put power cleans into this AMRAP and I was like, nah, I'll stick with the template and stick with the dumbbell. So I, I instead put it here every three minutes for five sets, three power cleans, drop and resetting between those reps, starting moderate and ending heavy. Um, so ideally sharing, sharing bars there. And then for the, the partner workout, and this ended up, sometimes they'll use partner, sometimes use team of three, and it really just depends on what the format of the workout is. And I kind of, also as I'll do this kind of thing, I'll jot down three movements. So I put down burby pull-ups, um, which is again, kind of a little bit of a, like hang gymnastics work, but something that's not kipping based since we had toes bar yesterday that was kipping based. And then in this case, figured we'd break, bring back out the rower. And, uh, because I feel like I would give people running all the time on Saturdays right now, cause it is a nice out. So giving them rowing and then wall balls, and that's like always a good combo and then, uh, more power cleans at the end of the workout. So that, that was sort of like my thought process behind this and, I, I like having something where it is more like a, a couplet or, you know, not so many movements that it gets complicated to like work the logistics of a workout. But an easy way to do that is if you have like a buy-in or a buy-out and then they can kind of focus on one movement at a time or two movements at a time. So in this case, we do have a buy-in and a buy-out. Uh, so it's four time with your partner. You're going to be doing 30 burpee pull-ups each so each of you will be doing that work. And then the rest of the, the work is split between you two. And then it's 10 rounds of a 25 calorie row for guys, 21 for females, 25 wall balls. So 25 calories, 25 wall balls, 10 rounds of that, which is obviously going to be a lot of work. And then the buyout is 30 power cleans at 155 or 105. And then I'll probably put in some language about for, for the floor coach to make sure that they're they're scaling to a certain percentage of uh, maybe what they hit in, in the strength or making sure that it's well below uh, the threshold that they obviously hit for that, the strength portion. So that's a week at Lumber Capital Athletics. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. If you want to see more about uh, group programming for my affiliate or you're just kind of curious about my thoughts for as it relates to competitors or GPP athletes or anything else, uh, let me know. Yeah, feel free to message me. I'll get back to you. Uh, you can email me, ben at zorfitness.com 
or DM me at Zor Fitness. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.